So am I. Good evening, everyone. My name is Beth Olson. I'm the uh, newsletter editor for the Laughing Whitefish Audubon Society. Uh, welcome to our November um, meeting. This is normally our membership meeting, um, but I so but we usually take care of some housekeeping duties for the board um, for this meeting, and we're going to take care of those right now before we begin the fun. All right. Um, there have been a few changes to our board lately. Ann Joyle has stepped down from her long term turn as secretary treasurer. Thank you, Ann, very much for your wonderful dedicated service. Our new secretary is Kathy Waller and our new treasurer is Gary Palmer. If you haven't done so yet, dues can be sent to Gary at 2522 Center Street, Marquette, Michigan, 49855. Uh, one other person has pressed into leaving us due to her other obligations. Amanda Willis was our vice chair. She needed to attend to other duties, leaving a vacancy for that position open. If you or someone you know would like to join our board and help out with those duties or in any capacity, we would be grateful. We can always use more people on our board. If interested, you can contact any board member. Our contact information is on the Laughing Whitefish Audubon Society website. Usually November is when we hold a social gathering and share bird and nature photos. In the name of health and safety, the board has decided to turn this into a Zoom meeting. We do, however, have someone here who can share many delightful nature photos and stories with us. Steve Lindbergh is a retired Marquette school teacher and guidance counselor. He also served as a Michigan State Representative for the Mich Upper Peninsula's 109th District and served from January 1st 2007 to January 1st, 2013. During his retirement, he's been able to focus on wildlife photography. Steve has captured many wonderful images during his photographic sachets into the region, which he posts regularly on Facebook. Welcome, Steve. Oh, I lose my hearing aid here. Okay. Hi. Um, I have a presentation for you here this evening, but uh, before we get into it, I just uh, want to take a quick minute to apologize for the uh, the quality of what you're going to see. I uh, this past week had a computer crash uh, that kind of put me behind the eight ball, and uh, as Kathy Waller can testify. This nice weather, uh, I, I wasn't always sitting at my computer trying to rectify the, the, the problem. So um, the, the presentation I'm gonna show you isn't exactly uh, what I had hoped it was going to be, but uh, well, we'll get started here. Uh, my, uh, my impetus for this presentation was uh, the, the quote that you see on the screen by uh, Melissa Gru. Uh, Melissa is a wildlife photographer who is, uh, she's fantastic. I, I just love her work. I, I, I like the way she thinks. Uh, and uh, before she was a wildlife photographer, she was a, a, a runway model in Paris. So that might influence me a little bit too. <laughs> um, anyway, she says, and if I can just, I can't. What's the problem? I can see it. I, oh, okay, <laughs> I guess you're gonna have, I, I can't see it all because I got stuff in the way here. Uh, I, she says, I called myself a wildlife biographer because I absolutely love to tell stories about individual animals. Stories that highlight their struggles, their relationships, their uh, stories that highlight their struggles, their relationships, their playfulness and delight in life. I want so much to convey to people that like us, non-human animals care deeply for their families, feel strong emotions and value their lives as much as we value ours. These kinds of stories can only be told over time and with patience. 
I'm not a patient. I'm, I'm not a patient with every much, very much in my life. But when it comes to wild animals and a story unfolding in front of me, I have nothing but time and attention. So it's really about spending an extended period of time with a subject. And this is kind of important in a non, in as non-intrusive way as possible in order to document a biography. And, and that's uh, Melissa Grew. And uh, I, I, I do think, you know, the, the, the non-intrusiveness is, is important. And it's a hard line to walk sometime uh, because you, you you know, you, you want to get close to the animal to get a good photograph. Uh, thank God for, you know, long lenses and uh, the ability to be able to crop photos. So uh, without further ado, we'll, we'll get started here. Uh, I titled this Animal Bios. And the first thing I'm going to show you is something that uh, you're not going to see much this evening. And that's, uh, this is a... This is not, I did not get an animal biography here. This is the uh, black neck stilt that was uh, here a couple weeks ago. Um, I was fortunate enough to just be down uh, by the Dead River and uh, someone pointed out to me where it was. Uh, I, I approached it, it was uh, on the opposite side of the river and, and I was able to, uh, I was quite a ways away and I, I stopped approaching it and, and I got some photos that, uh, you would have identified the bird and that would have been about it. Uh, fortunately, what happened is the bird started to walk down the, the, the Dead River shoreline towards me. And uh, I thought, oh boy, I'm gonna get some nice photos. About this time, a guy, a, a dog walker came down to the beach. And uh, uh, here's the bird again. And unfortunately, he flushed the bird. And this doesn't normally happen to me, but the bird flew parallel fairly close to me and I was able to get a uh, kind of a nice wing shot. But for the most part, all the other photos you're gonna to see tonight are birds and animals. And uh, I don't know if Alec Lindsay's on here. There's, there's mammals in this show. Uh, birds and animals that I have photographed, kind of some of them long-term. And, and I agree with uh, Melissa Grew, it's probably been the most satisfying photography that I do is, is to be able to spend time with an individual animal for a period of time. And uh, it's also very educational. So I'll start out with, uh, this is when I first started eight years ago when I first started photographing um, stuff. Uh, I had a family of yellow bellied sapsuckers who, uh, built a, a nest in, a, in an aspen tree in my yard. And uh, this one was kind of unique in that there was a bracket fungus uh, right over the hole that the, uh, the male had excavated. And uh, I didn't even know they were there until one day I was standing by the tree and I could hear this tap, 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 tap. And it took me a while to figure out that there was a bird inside the tree uh, excavating his, his nest. Um, here he is. Uh, taking out some, some of the material that he uh, used, that he excavated. And uh, here's uh, the female inspecting the nest. Evidently it, it, it was up to her uh, approval because they had a, a, a nest there that summer. And uh, here again is the, uh, both, both birds uh, uh, feed their young and uh, are actively engaged. And here's the, the dad in the, in, in the nesting cavity and mom outside. Uh, here they are again, dad leaving the nest and mom waiting to go in. She's probably got a mouthful of insects, but you'll note this is, a, this is a, a, the next year in that the first year, the hole was underneath that bracket fungus. The next year they came back and they uh, uh, had a nest uh, in the same tree, just in a little different location. They were, they were a lot of fun to watch. And uh, one of my first experiences with sitting on a nest. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, here's what yellow uh, bellied sap suckers do. Um, something I found kind of interesting when I was reading about Melissa Grew, she had, uh, she had also photographed yellow bellied sap suckers. And uh, she said that she had 
watch them bring insects to the uh, uh, sap wells and dip the insect in the sap well. And that was kind of a, a, a new behavior that people hadn't seen before. When I saw this, when I photographed this, I just assumed that the uh, sap sucker had taken the insect off of the sap in the sap well, but perhaps he was, perhaps he was dipping the insect in that. I, and I watch for that again when I uh, have the opportunity to sit on another nest. Uh, here's another bird that I followed for a while. Uh, my first year photographing. Uh, this was a, a Canada goose that had a broken wing and, and couldn't migrate south. Uh oh. Try what? Huh. Here's the moose. Hmm. Technical difficulties here, folks. Okay. Maybe we need to do it that way. Well, they'll still see the. We'll try it one more time. This okay. Way. Let me go ahead and um, move this out of your way. Okay. And move this out of your way. Okay. Thank you, Brian. Uh, this was the year of the polar vortex, and uh, this poor goose couldn't go south, and uh, he shared the the the, the beach with some gulls and the, and the ore boats early on were, were still shipping. Uh, and, uh, but you can see it was, it was pretty cold out from the ice and the, and the sea smoke. And uh, here he is again. Uh, I think, yes. Uh, I suspect what's happening is when it gets to the bottom of the, you know what I'm saying? No, it won't escape. There it goes. So, which picture are we on? Uh, we were on. Here, where? Yeah, we were right here. Okay. I mean, we can leave it. No, oh, it is having a. Can you folks see this? Let me maximize it though a little bit. Okay. A little bigger. That's okay. I can see those. Okay. Let's just. All right. right this way. All right. We'll do it this way. Anyway, um, I'll back up here. I, I admit uh, that I broke the market city ordinance uh, against feeding the geese. Uh, I think the statute of limitations is now up so I can confess. I, 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 I went and saw this goose every day and uh, I said, he might not make it, but he's not gonna die of starvation. So, uh, and here he is again, you can tell how cold it was. Uh, here he's got one foot tucked up here he's actually laying down on, on the ice, uh, eating the, the corn. Uh, and uh, as, his, as, as the winter wore on, his open water got smaller and smaller and smaller. And uh, uh, this was in February and that's all the open water he had. Um, and, and, you know, Melissa Grew says you, you kind of, you, you grow attached to these animals. And I kind of grew attached to this, to this goose. And I was kind of rooting for it to make it through till springtime. Unfortunately, the water, uh, he lost his, his, his uh, water and, come on. Hmm. Um, that, that's what I found uh, uh, shortly after he, he didn't have any more open water to, to uh, hide out in. And you know, it's nature, it's the way things are supposed to work. Uh, but uh, I still have, I still had some, re a little feeling of regret that he didn't make it through the, the winter. Uh, here's my favorite bird. I've sat on a number of, of, of chickadee uh, uh, nest as, as you know, they excavate their own nests. And uh, um, this one happened to be in a stump. It was only about three feet off the ground in an old white birch stump. And uh, so it was, it was, I would, 
after I had let the birds acclimate to me, I would, I would sit in my lawn chair and, 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 and watch them for sometimes for hours. And uh, here they are uh, uh, bringing food to the nest. Here's a, here's a photo of, of the chickadee and, and you can see that it wasn't the fanciest uh, nesting cavity in the world, but uh, they went all day long uh, bringing food to the nest and, uh, and then bringing, taking out the uh, uh, fecal sacs. Uh, so uh, chickadees are, are uh, my favorite bird and, and I've uh, really enjoyed uh, watching them over the years. And this is one of the few times that you can, you can actually watch individual birds. You know you're watching the same bird. Uh, another animal, this is a mammal. Sorry for you folks that uh, uh, don't like mammals, but uh, fox, uh, red fox, I've, 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 over the years I've sat on a, a number of dens. Uh, again, uh, you have to give them distance. Uh, they always know you're there, uh, but if you, if, you, if you give them enough distance, they'll, uh, they'll tolerate you. And uh, these are some of the earlier ones that I, I uh, observed. And uh, this was kind of actually not too far from my backyard. Uh, that den has been active for a long time, but it wasn't last year. And, uh, you know, as Melissa Grew says, you know, you, you watch these animals long enough and I, you know, you're not supposed to give them human emotion, but um, you know, you, you, you do see things that uh, certainly look like parental love and, uh, uh, and, they're, and they're just a joy to watch. And uh, that particular den had these three little active guys uh, who could entertain me for hours on end. Uh, just another... Here's a couple of the kits again. Um, a couple of years ago, I got introduced to, on a, on a snowy February day, I, this, this particular fox jumped across the trail in front of me. And uh, I, had my two, I had two dogs at the time and, and uh, Max, who I still have, uh, he's, he's a little guy, but he, can, he thinks he's a foxhound. He, he took off after this fox and you can see how deep the snow is and Max's legs are about six inches long, but he took off plowing through the snow after this fox. And I had to go around and, uh, the trail, catch him, bring him back. And I got him back on the main trail and this fox jumped across the trail going the other way, came right back and jumped across the trail going the other way and Max took off on me again. But the amazing thing was, is I, I looked and there were five fox in front of me. And uh, it, it, it took me a minute to figure out what was going on. But uh, one of those fox was probably a female fox. And I suspect the others were males. And they were all in hot pursuit of who was going to be the, including this cross fox, which was the first time in, that I ever remember seeing a cross fox. Although, if you live in Marquette, uh, I'm sure you, you, you've seen these and they're, it's just a red fox color variation. And for the rest of the afternoon, these guys chased each other around in, in, in a circle. Uh, but I never did see all five together at one time like I did at, 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 the, at, the, at the early uh, part of my... And here's that cross fox again, uh, leaving his mark on a, a, a muskrat push up. I think this was his uh, mate the first year. And uh, uh, they had pups. Now this is a, uh, this is a different, this is a different year. Uh, but again, this was a cross fox female and uh, she, uh, she had, uh, I think five pups. Here's another one. This is a, this again is a different cross fox. Uh, on this particular den, both the male and the female were, were cross foxes. And here's dad with his 
with his children. And uh, this is mom. And uh, this is this is a cross fox then where the, the uh, uh, female was a traditionally colored red fox and the, and the, and the male was a, a cross fox. And that's from, this is from uh, this summer, this spring, this guy uh, and his cross fox mate had four pups that I spent a considerable amount of time watching. Uh, these two fox, I was, I was approached by a, 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 a person who said, if I tell you where there's a fox den, will you promise not to tell anybody? And uh, yeah, I said, I can agree to do that. And uh, when she told me where the fox den was, I thought, hmm, I don't think people are going to not know this real long. But it, it, it was surprising. There were big snow banks around where this fox den was. And I watched these two fox for a period of uh, probably two months. And I don't think hardly anyone knew they were there, even though they were in a very obvious place. Um, I, I, I can't tell you how many people I watched walk by these fox when they were sitting there. Uh, here's a little later in the summer when the snow had melted. Now people are starting to find them. And uh, uh, now here is, is after the after the kits were born, there was this was no longer a secret, and I'm sure most of you probably know that this was at the uh, by Whitman School or Whitman Hall on Northern Michigan University's campus, in that little uh, dip that's there, and uh, now they became the major attraction. Northern's graduation day, there must have been a hundred people out there with their cell phones taking pictures of of Northern's uh, fox. And they, and, they, and they were delightful to watch. Uh, very tolerant of people, although you, you had to keep your distance and, and uh, mom did not like if you, if she let you stay where the driveway or where the parking lot was, as long as you stayed up where the parking lot was and as long as you stayed far enough away, she was cool with that. But if you tried to go around, uh, she hustled those, those kits down into that uh, den in a, in a hurry. Um, here again, um, you know, it's um, a mom and her kid. And I, I was just amazed with how efficient uh, this animal, this mom was in going out and getting uh, food for her, her, her kids. Uh, she'd leave that den and, and she'd be back in, a, in less than a half hour uh, with food, in this case, uh, some gray, a, a gray squirrel provided. Dinner and entertainment. Um, and and uh, she actually would encourage the, the, the they weren't eating meat yet, but she would encourage them to uh, to, you know, chew on this and play with it and chase it and sharpen hunting skills. Uh, and uh, here she is again, sitting by her den. It's kind of interesting. I stopped to take a picture of this fox one day and I had just driven by and saw that the fox was out and I had pulled into the parking lot that was uh, uh, the faculty parking lot that was on the opposite side of the Whitman parking lot. And there was a guy there in a pickup truck and he said, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm taking a picture of the fox there there. And he said, oh, my God, he said, I'm a, I'm a biology major and I never, I never knew they were there. And, uh, uh, but like I said, after they were there for a while, they became, they became pretty well known. And uh, later on, they, they dispersed in probably later June. And uh, looks like mom has taken this school as on a, on a, tour of Northern's campus. Maybe uh, she was thinking about going to school. Um, this is an, uh, another bird that I've had the uh, great pleasure of watching for 
a, a couple of years. They've, they've nested, not in consecutive years, but they've nested in that old nest box that, uh, that's another story that didn't start out as an S box, but uh, uh, the great crested flycatcher, there she's gathering nesting material. Um, here's assuring that she's gonna have fertile eggs and that she's gonna raise her young and uh, more nesting material. And uh, once the eggs hatch, it's a steady stream. And again, both parents feed. Uh, it's a steady stream of, of and uh, these birds became very tolerant of me. I would, I'd, I'd uh, sit in my lawn chair a, a little distance away and uh, they knew I was there, but they, they, they uh, could have cared less. They, they had, they had business to do. Whoops. Um, oh, I skipped some here. Where was I? There's both, uh, and I, I have no idea which one's the male and the, or which one's the female, but there was, and uh, if you've ever been around great crested flycatchers, they, Although when they're nesting, they're not quite as noisy, but they are noisy birds. I, I, th this bird is just an absolutely fantastic bird to watch. The only flycatcher that nests in the nesting cavity. And what they bring to the nest is just unbelievable. And it's a steady stream. Dragonflies are a favorite. I, and I, this one's got food hanging off its chin and I'm not sure if that's a bee or what that is that's uh, in its beak. And uh, an entomologist would have to probably identify most of these insects. Looked like this one wasn't a flying insect. Looked like that one might not have been too hard to catch. And as the uh, young get older, they, uh, they will occasionally come to the to the uh, nesting cavity hole, and 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 the and the parents will feed them. And uh, there's what there's there there's what was eating all that food. Uh, uh, and uh, just a delightful bird. Once they fledge, I I, I miss them. Um, here's another animal that I I've watched over the years. Uh, she's dead now. Uh, but I'm sure many of you who live in Marquette remember seeing the, the, the deer that uh, stayed mostly out at the island and she had that bad front leg, whether it was a, a, a birth abnormality or whether it was from an accident. It was painful to watch her walk, but she, she, she seemed to get around okay. Here she is in winter, again in winter. And... Uh, I watched her for at least five years. I suspect that she was probably eight years old when she, when I never saw her anymore. And she was a great mom. She had fawns every, a fawn or fawns every year. She nursed them. She, uh, she was just a, just a wonderful mother. I, I mean, this was just a, uh, this was a, a deer that you, you couldn't help kind of like falling in love with. And I, I, uh, I, every every spring I'd look for her and, and 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 every spring she'd surprise me by showing up. But uh, a few years ago, uh, I, I, she probably died of, of old age. Uh, I was fortunate enough one uh, spring, I think it was March, to have a, a, a maybe later than that, a barred owl that that probably was. I'm closing close to starvation because it, it it sat in a tree near my my house looking for uh, uh, I'm assuming rodents that were under the bird feeders uh, for a couple two it came at least three different occasions it came and it would stay all day long and the crows would occasionally come and uh, raise heck and with it and then they go and they leave it alone. It's not like when they get a, a, a great horned owl, they, they seem to be uh, somewhat tolerant of this beautiful bird hanging around. 
And uh, well, one time that I came to visit, it was snowing and uh, that bird just sat on that branch and uh, you can see how patient it was. Uh, this was a nicer day. It was, it was saying hi to me uh, or maybe grooming. And I, 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 I'd, I'd sit on my deck and watch it for hours and I never saw it make a kill. Here was, here was a, 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 a time that it, it attempted, it went after, a, I think, a, a chipmunk. Uh, after about four hours of watching it, I finally left. When I came back, my wife said five minutes after I left, they got a chipmunk, so. Um, uh, American kestrels, uh, I, this nesting spot wasn't a natural nesting site, but American kestrels have nested there for a number of years. Did not this last spring. Uh, kind of a well-known place by a number of uh, local photographers. Uh, sometimes, and here's a, here's a young one that uh, has fledged. And uh, I think that's dad feeding the, the, the young. Uh, lots of grasshoppers. I like the way this one's kind of like saying, hey, this is... This is what this is what uh, is on the menu today, guys. And uh, here again, another uh, uh, fledgling, just gorgeous birds, and uh, a lot of fun to watch. Uh, albinos. I've been I've been watching these deer even before I started doing a a, a photo a day on Facebook. Uh, they they kind of hang around in my neighborhood. Uh, there's been a number of them. I think they all have a common ancestor, which was the uh, albino at, that was located at the zoo and in, in when there was one at the, at the island. Um, and uh, most of them got names, Snow White, Princess, Marshmallow. Uh, here's, here's twins. You know, they, they, they are unique looking animals. Uh, they're deer, but they don't really always look like deer. And uh, I call that one the flying Walindas. Mm -hmm. uh, here's Freckles. Freckles was around for a number of years. Uh, see that she's got a chipmunk friend there. Um, another albino. And I... I I like the way that it, it, there looks appears to be a mane on this deer. Uh, and this is a different deer, but that same pose. And uh, does will have, you know, twins sometimes. One will be an albino, one will be a normal colored fawn. Uh, uh, albino. Does will have normal colored uh, fawns, not always albinos. A little curtsy. And sometimes these deer amuse me, like this one was, I'm not sure what it was doing, but it was, I, <laughs> I think it was picking burrs off its back leg because you can see there's a burr and it's, it's, uh, it's fur up there. Um, and I call this picture, what can brown do for you? <laughs> Um, here again, this was, uh, a, that's, that's a doe with a, with a, a an albino doe with an albino fawn and the normal colored fawn. And she, that doe wasn't very big. This is the uh, latest addition to the, to the albinos that I know of in Marquette. This, she's a year and a half old now. This is when she was a fawn last year. And I had, I had never seen a fawn this color. And I called her Sweetie Pie because I thought maybe she was going to be a piebald uh, and, and kind of maintain that that color. And she was, a <laughs> uh, I just love this little deer. She was a funny looking little thing. I don't know why that picture's not loading up sharp. Oh, well. You have to trust me. That wasn't, that wasn't, that photo, what? That picture wasn't out of focus. I there we go. Let's see if this one goes back here. Yeah, there. 
Um, look at those big floppy ears. And uh, here she is with, with, with her, her mom and her, her uh, normal colored sib. And uh, here she is with her sib. And if, if you've ever watched deer, and I'm sure many of you have, they, they, I mean, they have family groups, uh, they groom each other, they, uh, they're, they're very interesting to watch, uh, more than meets the eye. Here again is a, a fawn with a, with a uh, normal colored mom. Um, Last summer, I had another person approach me and say, uh, "If I tell, if I, if I, if I tell you where there's a great horned owl's nest, will you, will you promise to keep it a secret?" And I said, "Yeah, I would." And uh, uh, by the time I I got to the nest, the 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 young had fledged, but they they hung around the nesting site for probably I would say a month, and I would go every couple of days to see if I could find them and. Uh, Again, uh, this is an animal that I don't get to see very often because it's so nocturnal and you never know where they're going to be, but because they were hanging out near this nesting site, uh, I, I got to see them pretty often, watch them interact. Think they didn't know I was there. And there's the young one again. An adult, and I love this picture. I don't know, <laughs> little different perspective of looking at me, but um, and that was that was a young one. Uh, other birds that I've 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 sp spent considerable time watching is when they've been nesting is are, are uh, flickers, and. Uh, they too are, are both parents feed. Uh, you, you never see what they, with the, with the woodpeckers and with some of the other, with the chickadees and some of those birds, they, you can see what they bring in in their bill. These, these birds, of course, I suspect they, even when they're feeding their young, they eat a lot of ants and they uh, uh, regurgitate that kind of into the, into the, and it's, it's not a subtle process. That big bill goes right in there and jams right in the, in, into the, into the throat of the, of the, of the young one. And of course, uh, food in and uh, feces out. So fecal sacs, that's probably the biggest fecal sac I've ever seen right there. And uh, here's a, a, a young, flicker just about ready to fledge. A couple days later, they were, that nest was, was empty. Uh, here's another animal that I've watched even before I was taking photographs. The, uh, there's, there's been an otter family that has lived along the Dead River for as, as long as I can remember. Uh, some years you, you see one or two, uh, this year, there's this is this is a recent photo. Uh, I assume that the, this is a, a mother and a father and and three young ones. And uh, uh, sometimes they get together as a family. Sometimes they see the three young ones on their own now that they're learning to. And uh, uh, this is from last year, not this year. There's actually three three uh, uh, otter in this in this photo, you can look at it in Facebook and figure out where they are sometime. Uh, like, I, like I tell my friends, never get in a fishing contest with an otter. I, they're just incredibly adept at going down and, 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 and finding fish. Um, this was uh, an otter that I, it was just an individual that I ran into uh, in, in a, uh, um, that's, I didn't Photoshop that color in. It was, it was fall. That was the reflection of the, of, of the leaves in the water. And, uh, uh, this otter was kind enough to, and there again, you could see he, he knew I was there, but 
as long as I, as long as I didn't bother him and get too close, he, he didn't care. Uh, when the ice first comes in, a otter have, I just, I, I, this is the, my favorite time to photograph them. They, they can break through the ice uh, and they can actually come up on the ice like this. Uh, and ag again, they, they seem to, to uh, uh, care less that there's people around. And uh, that one's got a, there's two otter in that photo. You can see, uh, I think that's probably an adult there and that's probably a young one kind of uh, begging for lunch. But uh, uh, the parents, he's got he's to catch his own now. There's a, there's a bullhead and it's amazing how many, how many of these fish they'll eat in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a fishing or hunting session. I mean, it's not just one, they'll go down and uh, that bullhead went down in a matter of, of, of uh, a minute or two and that otter dove again and came up with another one. Here's an otter on ice with a bullhead. And uh, this is something I've seen several times. I'm hoping to see it again if, if this winter when the ice first comes in uh, uh, otter and red fox. I've seen this three different times. They, they'll they'll interact, uh, and my my friend Carlo, who is no longer with us, got great video of 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 red fox and a couple otters. Um, actually, looked like they were playing together. Although I suspect that the red fox is looking for the otter scraps. Um, had the good fortune this summer to, to find a green heron that was uh, staying in the same place. Uh, I visit them every couple days. Uh, again, if I uh, wasn't too intrusive, he was pretty good about letting me uh, take photos and watch him uh, groom. And uh, there he is, or she grooming and there we there we had a little uh, uh, attempt at catching prey and this is what he or she caught it was some kind of a bug I'm not sure or, or, or insect and I'm not sure what it was but it looked like it was a, a meal um, there's the otter saying or the, the green heron saying hello to me I have other, I wish I would have had a little more time or my computer wouldn't have crashed. I had other, that, this green heron feeding on, uh, on other, on fish also. But um, didn't end well. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure you can see the left leg of this, this green heron, there's, there's something wrong. Uh, I don't think it was a, a mechanical injury, I don't know. Uh, I, I suspect it was uh, maybe environmental. Uh, the pond that it was 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 uh, that it was hunting and, and fishing in, um, I suspect had uh, at one point in time perhaps had a lot of chemicals in it, and uh, I, I I'm I'm conjecturing, but I think that's probably what got this poor bird. Now I said you weren't going to see uh, uh, rare animals, but I, this uh, northern hawk owl came in, and spent most of the winter with us a couple years ago, and it was a, it was a it, it was the winter time. It's uh, the the uh, diversity of wildlife is is gets kind of repetitive. There's not much to to uh, to take photos of. So this hawk owl was a was a was a delight, and again, this bird was was very tolerant of of, of people. It, people didn't seem to bother it at all, and uh, um, I go check on him every day. I wouldn't see him every day, but uh, he did move around a little bit. But he was mostly in the compound uh, yard over uh, on the old Cliff Dow property, and. He, uh, just a magnificent animal. And I look at those talons.
and that look. Here again. And why is Oval Owl is scratching his head over uh, probably about what people are doing. Um, I also, this isn't an animal, but I also had a, my, my favorite tree. This, this is a tree that I've been photographing for a long time at the mouth of the Harlow uh, Creek. And uh, I just, I just loved this tree. And the, the, the mouth of that Harlow would, the, the, the stream there would change all the time. And that, you know, as you can see right here, it was, you know, I, I thought a number of times, I thought uh, this, this, this tree is going to go into the, there again, we're, there we go. This tree's going to uh, uh, topple over. And it was, and, oh, I, huh. here we go. And it, it, it I didn't know which one of us was going to die first, um, but it died first, but it's still standing. At least uh, it was the last time I was there. Um, so now I'm looking for a new favorite tree. And uh, this might be a candidate, even though it's, it's not a live tree. This is a, uh, I will tell you where this is. This is on Lake Lavasser. And uh, you, you have to have a kayak or a canoe or a boat to, to get close enough to this, to this tree. And there's, there's been an osprey nest here for a number of years. And uh, again, uh, one, of, one of my favorite raptors, although I, I don't, it's hard to say which is my favorite raptor, but, and, uh, here they are busy building the nest. I don't know what happened last year that the, the, the nest got destroyed and they had to start almost over from scratch. Um, and here's a, a, a bullhead coming in for the, the youngsters. My fisherman friend don't like this photo very much. That's a, that's a nice brook trout that being brought in. I had, I had one guy complain about, he said, oh, the damn osprey are eating my fish. And I said, no. I said, when you go fishing, you're catching the osprey's fish. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, and here again, I don't know what that one is for sure. A lot of bullheads. And of course, you do all that eating. And... Uh, Nobody carries out fecal sacs in an osprey nest. You learn to go to the edge of the nest and let her fly. And here are, are two young osprey when they when they get big enough before they before they fully fledge, they they practice by jumping up and off the off of the nest and landing back for for quite a period of time before they actually fly. A little bonus. I've watched this nest for a couple of years. A little bonus this year was in the tree uh, right next to the osprey nest, there was a grackle. And you can see the grackles leaving with the fecal sac here. But it's the first time I've ever seen a grackle nest in a cavity, although I understand that they do. But I've, the only, all the other grackle nests I've ever seen have been in, a, uh, uh, in an open nesting situation. This year, the, the additional treat was there were a, a pair of uh, American kestrels nesting in the same tree in a, in, a, in a nesting cavity as the osprey were in. And uh, so I was, every time I'd go to see them, I'd get a twofer. 
And uh, you can see this is, and this is pretty common. Most of the uh, uh, prey that the, the kestrels bring to the young are insects. But when you're a chickadee lover, you kind of hate to see this one. Uh, I think that was a, 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 a young freshly fledged chickadee that they got. But that's, that's unusual. On all the times I've watched the kestrel, that's the, that's the only time I've seen a bird come to the uh, feeding. And uh, uh, it, the other thing was, was, and I don't know why, every time the kestrels return to the nest, they harass the osprey. And I mean, it wasn't just a little harassment. It was like, we're after you. And they chase them for, for five, 10 minutes at a time. In this case, the osprey had a nice little brook trout and he was being pursued by a kestrel, actually by both of them, if they were uh, sometimes or an individual. Here again, this osprey was a young one. He was practicing, I guess he was practicing his uh, carrying technique. He carried the stick around and he'd go off the nest with that stick and the, and the, and the, and the kestrels would just zoom in on him. And I, I love the look on it, on, on it, it's, it's face. And uh, even when they, even when they sat on the nest uh, or on the branches, the, the kestrels would dive bomb them. And here's both of them just giving the osprey a uh, little problem. Anyway, um, I, I again will apologize for the for this presentation. I if if my computer hadn't uh, bit the dust on me, I I, I might have been a little more proud of it. But um, I had promised Beth I'd be here, and I was I'm thankful that I was able to put it together and get it here. <laughs> It was great. That <laughs> was fantastic. Yeah. It really was. Um, anybody have any questions, please uh, unmute yourself and uh, video yourself if you'd like and join us for a few minutes. We'll hang out. That always takes a minute for the first person to do that. Any questions? Well, thank you for taking... Do we lose? Oh, did it?